Hi everyone, this is Terry. Today I want to give you a quick tour of your screen in PE Design 11. If you're like me, you acquired the software as part of a bundle. I have owned Brother Software in the past, but it's been a long time. I think I was at PE Design version 7 or 8 since I use the software. I own several software programs, so navigating through PE Design 11 has been relatively easy for me. I have used my reference manual quite a bit, and I've recorded these videos, which has been helpful for me. If you're like me, you learn in a different way, and that may be that you like to read everything first and then go sit down and try to use it, or you might be a visual learner that you really need to see it. And I'm a little bit of both. When you open your software, you'll see that you may have this wizard. And the wizard is nice, particularly if you're new to the software. You can click right here to always show the wizard at startup. You'll see your most recently used files. You can open a design. You can use the, the, the design database, which I'll talk about a little bit later. You can open up your instruction manual and have an online view, which is extremely helpful because you can search by keyword, and I'll show you that. And what's helpful about that is that going through a printed manual can sometimes be slow when you're trying to find out a topic, particularly when it's found in multiple places. You can use templates, and I've recorded videos about this. You can also create embroidery patterns using images, set your hoop size, and there are other things that you can do, such as opening up design files. What we'll do is we'll close this wizard, but anytime you close it and you want to open it again, all you need to do is to click on the flower on the upper left-hand corner of your screen, and you can go down and open up the wizard again. It's just that easy. Let's look at the online manual. I was telling you about that, so I'll go to the manual. And let's just say I wanted to search for the word screen. One of the things you can do is specify your design page settings. Your design page is the hoop itself that you're using and your machine type. And you can also read about it here, and you can read everything about the design page by scrolling up and down. I like this because I can put this on my tablet and I can quickly look at it, but I can also look at it on my computer screen. Going back to the screen, let's just talk about the layout. One of the things we have is this drop down menu bar where we can choose File New, Open, Save, or Save As. Well, let's talk about Save and Save As. I recommend if you're using a purchase design like something from a, a digitizer that when you save it you get in the habit of using save as. You don't want to overwrite your original file. You have print, design page, design, or excuse me, that was design property, design settings, fabric selector. You can choose a color palette. You can go to the wizard or you can export. You can also go to options, but you also have option up here in the upper right hand corner of your screen. And to close that, you can choose exit. And when you choose exit, it wants to exit from the software. So when I say close it, I mean close the software. I'll choose cancel. All right, let's look across the page and let's look at our ribbon menu tabs. You'll see home and you'll see all the options available on the home tab. You see image, view, scan and cut, and stitches. We'll go back to the home tab. This is my design page and this is based on the size of my hoop. So if I go and change my hoop size, right now I have a nine and a half by nine and a half, but if I choose the 10 and 5 8 by 16, you will notice the size of my design page change and my system has resized this design page and reduced it by 24% so that design page will fit on my screen. I can go back and change my hoop size if I want to and I will to the, back to the 9.5 by 9.5 and, 
and you can see the size of my window. When you're creating a design, you need to choose the design page based on the hoop size that you're going to use. But you can always change it if you want to use a smaller hoop or a larger hoop. If you look on the screen, one of the things you'll see is the, the design that I have selected right here, which is one that I imported from the design library. And you can see that in this panel over here, which has several tabs. I selected this design and I chose import or I can double click on it or I can just drag a design. Let me click one. I can drag a design on my screen. You'll notice some of these designs are very small. This one has 758 stitches and it's only 1.17 inch by 0.99. Now if you're in, in a country that uses millimeters, you can change to millimeters by clicking right here in this little corner of your screen and you can see that design in millimeters. Honestly, when I'm looking at sewing machine stitches, I'm looking in millimeters. And when I'm looking at the size of something, because I'm in the U.S., I look in inches. So I'll click again to change it back to inches. You can drag and reshape the size of this stitch file, but you need to hold down your control key. Because what that will do is it will change the density. If you look in the lower right-hand corner, it says... Hold the control key while scaling to maintain the density and fill. Just keep in mind, with something this small, you don't want to stretch it out too large because you will change the appearance of that. And you may have some satin stitches that are way too large. If you look down at the bottom, you also see that you have a play out pan panel or a stitch simulator. You can select a portion of your designs on your screen and play out the stitch simulator. You can advance by 10 stitches, just like your sewing machine, by 100 stitches, or by one stitch at a time if you want to. You can speed it up using this slider bar. You can move to the right or left, and you can stop it or pause it. If you want to go back and see everything play out, you need to select all. So you can choose select and go down to select all. There are multiple ways to select all, and I covered that in several of my videos. Now I can play out all of the design, and I can see how large all the design is and the number of stitches. So I can play that out. Now, if I want to speed it up, again, I can move the slider bar and move it to the far right, and you can see it advances very quickly. And all I'm doing is holding my left mouse button to do that. I'll stop it, and I'll go back to the screen, and we'll talk about this over here on the left. This is our sewing order. In your sewing order, you're going to see all the components. Now, in my videos, I, you'll hear me call them objects. And I do that because I have other digitizing programs. And these components are considered as objects. They can be selected. For instance, if I wanted to select this design here, I can hold my left mouse button. And I can drag a box around it. And, but I need to click the select patterns, either here or here, to select those patterns. And once they're collect, excuse me, once they're selected, you'll see this bounding box around it. So you know that you have it selected, and whatever you are going to do at this time, it will affect this pattern. So if I want to resize it and hold down my control key, I can make it smaller again. Or if I wanted to delete it, all I have to do is go to home, and I can choose to leave. There are multiple ways to do things. Some things can be accomplished by using your right and left mouse buttons. I suggest that you just select something and then you click your right mouse button so you can see what you can do with the selection. It will change depending on what you're selecting. And I'll select this design and right click. So you see this has changed. 
If you look on the right hand side, you notice that there are different tabs. These tabs change based upon what you have selected and the type of object it is. This is text. This is a stitch file. On text, you'll see the sewing attributes. You can, you'll see the color tab. You can change it. And you can change the text attributes. On a stitch file, you'll see the color tab. You can make all of this a singular color by selecting one of the colors in the design. If you decide you don't want to do this, you can choose undo. And you will also see that the sewing tab is grayed out. If you click on a shape and draw a shape on your screen, one of the things you'll notice about shapes is that you can go in and change the sewing attributes. Now I will tell you that I have multiple videos covering menu options that you see in the menus like the text and shapes. I have not recorded everything that's in the software yet so you may see a lag time on some of the items such as the image. I still have to record auto digitizing and photo stitch. But you'll find that I have several videos that will help you gain some confidence using the software. One of the things I want to talk to you about is over here on the right hand side you can hide these tabs and what you'll see is they'll fly out. If you click the, the little needle or pin they come back up. If you click the X if you click the X, you're going to close this window. I don't recommend when you're new that you close this window out. You would have to have something on your screen if you close it to be able to open up all of the tabs. I will record a video for you showing you what happens if you close it up. You do have the option of resizing this window if you want and you want to see more of the information on that window. I'll move it back and likewise you have the ability to resize your sewing order window as well. The other thing that you need to keep in mind is you can move up and down on some of these windows by using the scroll bar and that's true throughout the program. Let me resize this back. I could have also chosen undo. Let's look at this bar right here. This is called the Quick Access Toolbar. One of the things that you might notice, and let me remove one of these items from my Quick Access Toolbar, and if I want to add that item back, all I need to do is go to the, the specific tab, I believe it was Show Grid, right click and add it to my toolbar. Now there are ways to customize this toolbar so you can move things around and I'll have that in a separate video. My toolbar might look different than yours. One of the things that you might want to do is to remove the save. As I mentioned, if you click the save and you have a digitized file from a third party vendor like Anita Good Design or Designs by Juju or someone else like OESD, you could end up overwriting that file and you may not want to do that. For that reason, some people remove this icon from their quick access toolbar as a way to remind themselves that they don't want to overwrite it. And they get in the habit of using Save As. The next thing I want to show you is there is a menu that's called Option. PE Design is made up of several components, and that means several programs. We're in the Layout and Editing program. There is a program called Design Center. There's a program called Programmable Stitch Creator. There's one called the Design Database. And there's also the Font Creator and Stitch Design Factory. I'll have videos for each of these. I don't have all of, them, all of them recorded now. I do have some on Font Creator. You also have Help, and with Help you can look at your online instruction manual. You can check for updates. You can also set your software up so that it looks for those updates. We'll select this 
And if you place a check mark here, it will always look for the most recent update. In your help menu, you will also find customer support, online registration, and information about your layout and editing, including what version of software you use. I hope this quick tour of the screen has been helpful to you. If you like my videos, you will find more of them on my YouTube channel. My YouTube channel has my name, Terry Maffitt, and I have numerous videos on this channel, including some specific to the sewing machine for the Dream Machine and also for the Luminaire. I hope you en enjoy your software and you find that it is fun to learn to use your software. It's also fun to learn by make making mistakes. So don't be too hard on yourself if you don't know how to do something immediately. You will find the more that you use your software, the easier it is to use. Thank you and have a good day.